Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, we'll be considering examples where you're given a function and asked to find all horizontal and vertical asymptotes that would occur in the graph of the function. The relevant reading for this video is section 2.2 .2 of the book. And I wrote here uh, pages 109 to 114, but it's actually uh, all of section 2.2. .2. And um, the relevant examples from the book is this collection of examples, four of them, spread out all throughout the section. So this video is kind of a wrap-up of a, a bunch of different things that we've been discussing through different parts of section 2.2. .2. Now, in the video, there are going to be five concepts uh, from the reading and from previous videos and from the prerequisite material that will be important. Important concept number one is the correspondence between asymptotes and limits. So re recall these words about a horizontal asymptote. The graph of f of x has a horizontal asymptote with line equation y equals b. Now this sentence may or may not be true, but uh, this sentence is abbreviated by this symbol. The limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to b, where b is a real number. So to determine uh, if f has any horizontal asymptotes, we should investigate the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity to see if it is a real number. And recall these words about a, a vertical asymptote. The graph of f has a vertical asymptote with line equation x equals c, and the graph goes up along both sides of the asymptote. Again, that's a sentence that may or may not be true, but uh, it can be abbreviated by this symbol. Of course, there are lots of different ways that a graph can behave at a vertical asymptote. It can go up or down on the left side and up or down on the right side. Those don't have to match. And it can even have a, a finite limit on one side and an infinite limit on the other. So uh, these various kinds of behaviors are abbreviated by a variety of symbols, uh, such as this. The limit as x approaches c from the left is infinity would indicate that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals c, and the graph goes up along the left side. This symbol would indicate that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals c, and the graph goes down along the right side. So um, lots of different kinds of limit symbols that are all implying that there is a vertical asymptote. So in order to determine whether the function has any vertical asymptotes, we should look for real numbers, x equals c, where the limit of f of x will turn out to be infinite, or where the one-sided limits will turn out to be infinite. Important concept number two is the form of a function that's most convenient for finding limits. We've seen that we're going to be needing to uh, investigate the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x. Well, we have seen before that it's the standard form of a function that's useful for that. And we've seen that we're going to need to be investigating limits of this form, the limit as x approaches c, where c is some real number. And we have seen in, in previous videos that it's the factored form of the function that's most useful for doing that. That's important concept number two. Important concept number three is this uh, collection of key results about limits at infinity for rational functions. Um, remember that we, we pay attention to the, to the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. And there are these important kind of um, trends or the uh, patterns of behavior. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the graph will have a horizontal asymptote on both sides with line equation that's equal to the ratio, or y equals uh, the ratio of the leading coefficients. On the other hand, um, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the graph of f will again have a horizontal asymptote, but this time it's going to have line equation y equals 0. 
And the third possibility is if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, well then in that case, the graph of f goes up or down on both uh, on the ends, and there's no horizontal asymptote. So that's key concept three. The fourth important concept is the concept of factoring polynomials. Uh, some polynomial functions can be fully factored into linear factors. So for instance, this polynomial can be fully factored. Um, this polynomial can be fully factored. Notice it's, it's easiest to factor in stages. We factored out a constant first, and then we factored a simpler polynomial second. In this example, I factored out the number three first, and then I observed the difference of two squares, and I factored that this way. Now, some polynomial functions cannot be fully factored into linear factors, like this one. You can factor out a 3, but you can't factor this expression x squared plus 4 any further. So this quadratic polynomial is called irreducible because it cannot be factored into linear factors. You can factor out that 3 again, but that's not factoring it into linear factors. Important concept number five is the correspondence between factors of a rational function and its graph behavior. This stuff has come up in um, the last couple of videos and throughout section 2.2. Uh, basically, if, if a factor appears in the numerator only, then the graph of the function will have an x-intercept caused by that factor. If a factor appears in the numerator and denominator with equal powers, then that factor is going to cause a hole in the graph of the function. And finally, if a factor appears in the denominator only, then the graph will have a vertical asymptote caused by that factor. That's important concept number five. So here's our first example. Find all horizontal and vertical asymptotes for the function. All right, well, to determine whether or not there's a horizontal asymptote, we work with the standard form, which is given, uh, the standard form of f of x. So what do we observe? We observe that the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. Now, since we notice that, we know that we're supposed to pay attention to the leading coefficients. So what do we do with those observations? Well, remember that we have that table of uh, results that we have noticed. We're looking at this sort of situation. Degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. So our conclusion is that the graph has a horizontal asymptote with line equation y equals 3 halves the y value is uh, the ratio of those leading coefficients. Now, to determine whether or not there are any vertical asymptotes, we have to find the factored form of f of x. So there's the factored form of the function. Um, what do we observe, first of all? The factor x plus 1 appears in the denominator and not the numerator. Remember that when looking for um, things that will cause vertical asymptotes, we're looking for factors that appear in the denominator and not in the numerator. So what's the conclusion? The graph will have a vertical asymptote with line equation y equals negative 1. Now, what do the other factors cause? So this x plus 1 appears in the denominator, not the numerator. But what about these other factors? There is an x plus 3 that appears just in the numerator, and there is an x minus 4 that appears in the numerator and denominator with equal powers. 
Well, remember that those cause uh, uh, things to happen in the graph that we observed before. Let's go up and look. Factors that appear only in the numerator will cause x-intercepts in the graph. Factors that uh, appear in the numerator and denominator with equal powers, those factors will cause holes in the graph. The factor x plus 3 is in the numerator, not in the denominator, so it causes an x-intercept. And the x-coordinate is minus 3. We can confirm this with a computer graph. Notice that uh, in this graph, there's a, a horizontal asymptote with line equation 3 halves. And notice that there's a vertical asymptote with line equation x equals negative 1. What's not shown in this computer graph is the fact that there is actually a hole in the graph at x equals 4. It's common for computer graphs and calculator graphs to not show holes when we know they should be there. That's the end of example 1. Let's go on to example 2. In example 2, we're supposed to find all horizontal and vertical asymptotes of this function f of x equals 5x cubed over the quantity 3x squared minus 12. All right, well, so let's start by looking for horizontal asymptotes. So we work with the standard form. And what do we observe? We observe that the degree of the numerator is 3, and that's greater than the degree of the denominator, which is 2. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that there won't be a horizontal asymptote. The ends of the graph go up or down. So that's uh, our conclusion about horizontal asymptotes. To determine uh, whether there are any vertical asymptotes, we have to find the factored form of the function. So we're looking for vertical asymptotes here. So we're looking for factors that appear in the denominator and not the numerator. We see that there are two of them. So what do we know about this? We know that they will cause vertical asymptotes. The line equations for the vertical asymptotes will be x equals minus 2. That corresponds to that factor. And the other vertical asymptote will have line equation x equals 2. That corresponds to that factor. Now what about the other factors? What do they cause in the graph? Well, what other factors are there? There's this factor. That's actually um, a term that can become zero. It's, it's the, the variable x by itself, but then raised to the power 3. So that, if that factor x appears in the numerator alone, raised to the third power. So we know that's going to cause an x-intercept. Let's uh, Look at a computer graph and see if our predictions are borne out. Here's the graph. Notice that uh, there is no horizontal asymptote. We do notice that there's what's called a slant asymptote, but we're not studying those in chapter two of this course. We're not really interested in those. So what we have found is that there's no horizontal asymptote. But we do see that there are two vertical asymptotes. And furthermore, we see the x-intercept. 
That's the end of example two. In example three, we're supposed to find all horizontal and vertical asymptotes for this function. Here there's a typo. There's supposed to be a plus there and there. To determine whether or not there's a horizontal asymptote, we work with the given standard form. So what do we notice? Uh, we're supposed to look at the degrees. The degree of the numerator is one, and that's less than the degree of the denominator, which is two. So what does this tell us? It tells us that there will be a horizontal asymptote, and we don't have to pay attention to the leading coefficients. because the line equation for the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, regardless of what those leading coefficients are. It's just the fact that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator that causes that to happen. Now let's consider whether there are any vertical asymptotes. Well, we uh, work with the factored form of f of x. Uh, the denominator cannot be factored. So the denominator can't be factored further. So the factored form of the function is actually the same as the standard form. Now remember, what we're looking for when we're looking for vertical asymptotes is that we are looking for factors that appear in the denominator that don't appear in the numerator. We're looking for linear factors in the, in the denominator that don't appear in the numerator. Well, the denominator does not have any linear factors. And since it does not have any linear factors, that tells us that there will not be any vertical asymptotes. Let's make a quick note. What do the other factors cause in the graph of f? Well, notice that there is this factor up here in the numerator. That factor x is in the numerator and not the denominator. And so we know what it will cause. It will cause an x-intercept. So let's confirm this with a computer graph. Here's the graph of the function. So notice there's the horizontal asymptote with line equation y equals zero. And notice that there are no vertical asymptotes. And our third observation was not about asymptotes. It was just that additional remark about the x-intercept. That's the end of example three, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.